$4,000 is invested in an account for 25 years. Calculate the total interest earned at the end of 25 years if the interest is A, 6% simple interest, B, 6% compounded annually, C, 6% compounded quarterly, and D, 6% compounded monthly. Round your answers to the nearest cent. For this problem, we're going to look at both simple interest and compound interest. Let's begin by identifying some key pieces of information. So it says $4,000 is invested. Right away, I know that 4,000 is my principal. So I'm gonna write down what I know, which is my principal or my p-value is 4,000. The second thing I know is that it's invested in an account for 25 years. That tells me that my time or my T value is 25. And then finally, we're asked to calculate the total interest, okay? So that means we're gonna be looking at I, our I value. That's what's unknown. Our interest is unknown. Oh, and I can't forget about the one other item, which is our interest rate, right? We always have an interest rate. And for this, we have a 6% interest rate. So our interest rate, or our R value, is 6%, which we know is 6 divided by 100, or moving the decimal two places to the left, is 0 0.06. Those are key pieces of information, and now we can go about finding all of the things for A, B, C, and D. So let's start with 6% simple interest. So I'm just gonna draw a bar here, and we're gonna start with simple interest, part A. What do we know about simple interest? Well, in simple interest, there's two formulas that we use, but specifically because we're looking for our I value or our interest value, we want to use the simple interest formula, I equals P times R times T. We have P, we have R, and we have T. So this first part, A, is very simple. <laughs> That's kind of a pun. All right, so my husband would be, I'm not laughing at that for sure, but all right, so our P value is 4,000. Our R value is 0 0.06, and our T value is 25. We're going to pull out our calculator and evaluate our interest. So what do we have here? We have 4,000 times 0 0.06 times 25. And when we put all that together, that tells us that our interest is $6,000. So if we invest $4,000 at 6% for 25 years, our interest, or the amount of interest earned, is 6000 That was the easy one. Let's then look at part B. 6% compounded annually. Now, do you remember our compounding formula? Our compounding formula is a little different than our interest formula. So let me write down our compound formula. So for the compound interest formula, we have the basic equation, which is our formula, which is A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. Does that look familiar? And there's a couple key pieces that have not been identified in this formula that we don't even have up top. Let, let me tell you what I mean here. I'm getting, I'm getting tongue-tied. So notice, in this formula, we have a value A, which we haven't even talked about yet. A stands for our future amount or accumulated amount in our account. The other letter that we don't have accounted for is this one right here, N. N is our number of compounds per year. So that's the number of compounding periods per year. So I'll just put down number of compounds per year. All right, now, since we are compounding annually, that means that our number of compounds per year is going to be one. Our future amount, well, that is also unknown. So not only do we not know our interest, but we also don't know our future amount. 
Let's start by using the formula we're given to find our future amount. So our future amount, or A, is equal to our principal, P, which is $4,000, times 1 plus our interest rate, 0 0.06, divided by N, which we just said for part B, we're compounding annually, so N is 1, and then N times T. So we're going to take 1 times T, which is 1 times 25, or simply 25. So that means our formula is 4,000 times 1 plus 0 0.06 raised to the 25th power. We're going to put that into our calculator, and 1 plus 0 0.06 is just 1.06. We're going to raise that to the 25th power, and we're going to multiply that by 4,000. So you can do it on a scientific calculator, or you can plug it into Desmos, or any other graphing calculator, or any other tool you have available to you online, or just handheld. So you're going to take 4,000 times 1 plus 0 0.06 raised to the 25th power, and I get that the future amount, or our A value, is $17,167.48. Now remember, we weren't looking for our future amount. Because you think, that's a lot of interest, but it's not our interest, right? That's our future amount. To get our interest, what would we need to do? Ah, I'm just going to jot it over here. Think about it. Our interest is actually our future amount, if you think about it. The interest that you earn is your future amount minus your principal. Right? You have money that you start in an investment. The future amount includes both that principal that you started with as well as the interest earned. And so to get your interest, you're simply going to take your future amount and subtract off the principal. So to get the interest earned for Part B, we're simply going to take our future amount, which is $17,167.48, and we're going to subtract off our principal, our principal being $4,000. So when we take that amount, $17,167.48, and we subtract off our $4,000, that tells us that we have a remaining interest or a remaining amount of $13,167.48. That right there is our amount of interest, and that's what goes in the blank. The future amount subtract off our principal. So we would say that if we were investing this money at 6% compounded annually, we would wind up earning one, excuse me, $13,167 and $48 in interest. Wow, do you see the difference between simple interest and compound interest? And that's only compounding annually. Two more, we have to do quarterly and monthly. But now that we've set up the basic formula and the basic foundation, those other two are going to fall out very quickly. The only thing that actually changes between Part B and Part C is the number of compounds per year. So if you look, Instead of compounding annually for Part C, we're actually compounding quarterly, which means four times a year. So we're going to repeat the same process, but this time, instead of N being 1, we're going to change it so that N is actually 4. Let me go back to my formula down the bottom, where I have A equals 4,000 times 1 plus 0 0.06 over 1, and change that 1 into the number 4, because now we're compounding quarterly. We also have an N that appears up here in the formula NT, right? 
And so that's going to slightly change what I have over here. Instead of having an exponent, excuse me, instead of having an exponent of 25, we're going to have something slightly different. And instead of having a value of 0.06, we're going to have a value of 0.06 divided by 4. So you're going to take in your calculator 4,000 and you're going to multiply by 1 plus 0 0.06 over 4 raised to the 4 times 25 or 100th power. All right, so why don't you get out your calculator and start calculating that or get onto Desmos and I'll erase what we have over here, leaving all the rest. And so if we're compounding, quarterly or four times a year, we're going to take 0 0.06 divided by four and we're going to add one to it. We're going to raise it to the hundredth power and then we're going to multiply by 4,000. And when we do that, the amount that we get is $17,728.50. $17,728.18. Remember, this is our future amount. To get our interest, we take that future amount, $17,728.18. We subtract off $4,000, and that's going to give us $13,728.18. And that's the amount that goes in Part C, $13,728.18. I hope it's going well. I hope the calculations are going well. Last one, you can probably do it without my help, but I'll just put it in to make sure we finish up and everything is working out properly. For that last account, we are doing 6% compounded monthly. This time, the number of compounds per year are going to be 12 because we're compounding each month, and there are 12 months in a year. So going back down to our compound interest formula, we're going to erase out, right? We have to erase out that 4, and we're going to replace the 4 with the value 12. So we're going to take 12 times 25, and we're going to divide 0 0.06 by 12. So that means my exponent is no longer 100, and the value that I'm dividing by is no longer 4, and instead I've got 12 times 25 being my exponent, which is 300 up there. All right, so let me erase here, get rid of our future amount. Let's erase over here and get rid of our future amount. Let's pull out our calculator or Desmos or computer or phone, whatever you're going to use to evaluate this expression. And you're going to take 0 0.06 and divide it by 12, add to it the 1, and raise that quantity, right? Raise that quantity to the 300th power, multiply by 4,000, and see if you don't get the same answer I get. You should get $17,859.88. I want to put a little note here. When you look on the calculator, you get a value 17,859 point, and then it's 87925. But remember, we're rounding to the nearest cent or the nearest hundredth. And since the value to the right is 9, we need to round that up, and that's going to give us 88. So we have a future amount of $17,859.88. We're going to subtract off the 4000 and that's going to give us $13,859.88 for interest. And that fills in our last box, $13,859.88.
and 88 cents. So just to summarize, for the first part, you can use your simple interest formula that has I directly solved for. In the second part, if we use our compound interest formula, it gives us our future amount. So in order to get the total interest, we have to take future amount minus principal. Good luck, everyone, and I hope it makes lots of sense. Go ahead and email me or text me, or excuse me, email me or message me if you have any questions at all.